Research shows that people tend to complain once a minute during a typical conversation. Complaining is tempting because it feels good. But like many other things that are enjoyable, such as eating 10 ice cream cups in one sitting, complaining is not good for you. Hi, my name is Sasha Wellborn Houston, and I'm here to talk to you about why you should stop complaining. One day, I came home, and I had a ton of homework to do. I told myself I can watch one Netflix episode, and I'll get right to it. Well, turns out I watched three 42-minute episodes. I checked the clock, and it was 9 o'clock. I started to complain and complain about how I'm never going to get my homework done and how I should just give up. I checked the clock again, and it was 10.30. Because I was complaining so much about how I'm never going to get it done and how I should just give up, I wasted an hour and a half that I could have been doing my homework in. You may be wondering, why do we complain? Well, according to James Pembaker, a social psychologist at the University of Texas, most people complain for emotional release. Another reason why we complain, according to Robin Kowalski, we complain so most people complain so that most people complain to achieve desired outcomes such as sympathy and attention. So now, why should you stop complaining? What's in it for you? Well, when you stop complaining, you can boost your overall happiness, improve your mental state, and reduce stress. People who constantly complain tend to store more body fat, have a greater risk of cancer, and have more heart problems. Research at Stanford University shows complaining can shrink your hippocampus. Your hippocampus is the area of your brain that is critical to problem solving and intelligent thoughts. Now, there's many times where you need to stand up and bring matters to attention, but complaining unnecessarily or unproductively can affect your brain negatively. There are many reasons why we complain. One reason is because we feel the need to be validated. But in most cases, we don't. We feel like the victim. When you complain, you tend to feel stuck, hopeless, or even trapped, like it's out of your hands, but it's not. My mentor, Ms. Eggleston, says, focus on the solution, not the problem. One example she gave me is in her classroom, when one of her students starts clicking his or her pen, she will offer them a stress ball instead. In doing so, she's focusing on the solution and not dwelling and complaining about the problem. So you may be wondering, what are some things I can do about it? Well, the first solution to complaining is, have, is seeing the bigger picture. Will this really matter to you in five minutes, five months, or even five years? I realized this when I was walking in the hallway and I bumped shoulders with someone. I got very frustrated, but after 30 minutes, I didn't even remember it happened. <coughs> The second solution to complaining is having an attitude of gratitude. When you feel the need to complain, focus on something you're grateful for. When you do this, you can lower your cortisol levels by 23%. Cortisol is the hormone of fight or flight. It's going to take time to break a daily habit of complaining, and you will have to restart at square one many times, but that's okay because it's normal. It takes some people more than one month to go a day without complaining. So the next time you feel the need to complain, don't. Take a step back and take a deep breath. Allow yourself to cool off before you make any rash decisions so you can make better decisions. I challenge you to go one day without complaining and see how it affects your mood, your stress, and your overall happiness. Will you rise to the challenge? Thank you.